Spain and join us here. Uh, we are the Sigma Delta Pi, the Spanish Honor Society. So we are so excited to be here today with you. Uh, my name is Adriana. I am the president of the Sigma Delta Pi this year. Also, uh, I want to show you who we are. So here I am. Then we have also here Rachel Fleming, which is our, another president of the organization. We have Roberto, who is the treasurer, Nerea Delgado, who is our secretary, and El Brandol, who is our advisor, Alejandra Gutierrez, who is our second advisor, and Hernandez, who have been doing a great work as ex-president, and she's joining us also here. So with that being said, I wanna uh, pass the voice to Anel. Um, hello, I first want to thank um, Yang and the whole um, institution, the GLOW, for uh, helping us host this, um, this coffee hour. We are going to talk very briefly about Sigma Delta Pi, the Spanish Honor Society. And I want to let you know that we have a long standing with Florida State University. Oh. Our chapter dates back um, from 1935. So we've had a Spanish Honor Society since uh, Florida State University was the Florida State College for Women. So we really appreciate everybody being here supporting Florida State University and Sigma Delta P because it's, um, you know, it's, it's almost like a tradition, um, you know, or university. I have another slide, Adriana, if you can move to the next slide. I wanted to briefly show to you, um, Yeah, I wanted to show you this picture. This, um, so um, uh, if you can go back, Adriana, thank you. So this picture is from 1938, if I'm not mistaken. It shows you um, all the participation that we have had in the society from, you know, from there until now. And so, uh, you know, including faculty members and mainly students. So we really appreciate you being here. If you um, would like to be part of this honor society to the Spanish Honor Society, if you can move to the next slide, Adriana, you, um, you know, it's very, it's, um, you know, it's relatively easy to join. I have shared with everybody in the chat the, you know, the, the website where you can find these, you know, these requisites. It, but if not, just send me an email. I'm an El Brando. You can email me at abrandon at fsu.edu and I can walk you through the application process. We really, um, you know, we have very fun activities like um, the conversation, the Spanish conversation table, and you don't need to be a member to join us, but um, I'm going to leave Esther, you know, our ex-president, to talk to you about these fun activities that we have through the semester. Thank you. Thank you, Anel. Yes, so I'm going to, my name is Esther, and I'm going to talk about some of the activities we do every semester. So we have every week the Spanish conversation table, and we usually hold, have it at um, Sweet Pea the Cafe, so near to the campus, and this table is open to everyone. All levels are welcome, so anyone that wants to uh, practice their Spanish skills can attend, and sometimes we play games that like you can see in the picture, or we just talk about our weeks, or nowadays it looks a little bit different because it's through Zoom, so it looks more like this. And so you, uh, if you want to attend, it's open to everyone. And we also do every semester a movie screening. So here to the right, you can see the posters of the last two that we did. And we will have another movie screening next semester. And in this movie, usually we talk at the end about the movie and what it represents. And they're like movies done by Spanish. It's in Spanish. So yeah, but it's, we always, always have captions. And if you can move to the next slide, Adriana. Uh, we also do uh, an annual event called Noche Bohemia, and it's, this is more like a Spanish it's open mic, like an open mic in Spanish, and we have had it for three years. Last year we couldn't do it because of the pandemic, but you can see that there's poetry readings, music, dancing, and we usually have a lot of fun, and this is also open to everyone that wants to attend, and if you can move to the next one. 
Uh, we also had a last year a marathon reading of the Quixote, and we did it in front of Strozier. And if you can move to the next one. Uh, we also participate or collaborate with the high schools here in Tallahassee. So to the right is a picture of some of our members with the FSU High, the high school. And to the right, some members participated in the Modern Language Expo, which is like a contest that high schools do here in Tallahassee. And we were judging the skills of the students. And it's always a lot of fun to see them uh, talking in Spanish. And if you can follow to the next one, Adriano, pass to the next slide. And if you want to stay updated to the events that we do, you can follow us in Facebook and in Instagram. We are very active in these two platforms. So we always post here and in Instagram the events that we are that we are doing. So yeah. And thank you. And Adriana, if you want to continue. Thank you, Max. Thank you so much, Esther and Anel, for sharing who we are and all the activities that we do. Now I'm going to do the transition uh, from our presentation to uh, Chef Jesse. So today we are doing a very yummy uh, recipe. And as you know, there are many, many countries that speak Spanish. And this is actually one of the dishes that somehow is something that we eat in all our countries. So the name of it is churros. And now I want to welcome Chef Jesse, who is going to show us how to do the churros. Thank you, Edri. Um, do you want to stop sharing first? Thank you. Jesse, just- Hello, everybody. Yeah. There we hey, go. Hey, Jan. Hey, Jesse. Well, welcome to the Globe Kitchen. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to show you all how to make uh, churros. Uh, this is basically a uh, fried pastry. Um, we're going to make a really rich kind of dough. It's called a shoe dough. And we're going to uh, pipe it through this uh, pastry bag and, and then fry it in some oil. Uh, we're also going to make a chocolate uh, dipping sauce with it and kind of give some options on kind of decorating it or making it a little more exciting and talk about kind of where it came from and, and all those good details. So uh, let's get into our ingredients here. We've got uh, one cup of water. We're gonna do one teaspoon of salt, one stick of unsalted butter, uh, one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, and then four extra large eggs. Uh, and so yeah, the shoe dough, it does come from Europe originally, uh, and you can make all kinds of cool stuff with this dough. So definitely keep this recipe on hand and uh, I'll kind of tell you more about the different pastries you can make with it later. All right, so you're gonna want a small, uh, you know, saucepan. I've got a uh, kind of more of a saute pan here just so I can kind of show you how to do this. It's a little bit harder to stir it, but you can do it in a saute pan if you need to. It does not need to be uh, nonstick. So we're just gonna turn it on high. We're gonna add our cup of water. We're gonna add our teaspoon of salt. This dough is definitely different than kind of your standard cake dough or your, you know, fritter dough or your donut dough uh, because it's cooked. We cook this dough to start it off. And that really helps uh, when we're forming it. It's kind of a, a thick kind of pasty dough. So when we're gonna push it through this pastry bag, it's gonna hold its shape better. Usually with cakes and, you know, muffins and that kind of dough, it's very liquidy. And, you would just like, a, it would be more like a funnel cake if you're gonna put it into the oil. This one, you know, you, it won't need to have structure. It needs to hold up well uh, while it's frying so that it can keep its shape. All right, so we're gonna bring this to a boil. We're gonna get that butter melting. There we go. So at the same time here, just to make things quick, I'm gonna start my chocolate sauce over here too. And I've just got a really small little saucepan here. Uh, this chocolate sauce, you can make it a little, add more milk to it if you wanted to make hot chocolate. 
And we're going to do one cup of whole milk. I'm going to pour most of it in and I'm going to reserve a little bit. And in that little bit that I reserved, I'm going to put a teaspoon of starch. So I'm just using tapioca starch, but you can use corn starch, whatever kind of plain starch that you have will work. Basically, that's just going to thicken it up slightly. And so this is called a slurry when you mix your starch in with a little bit of liquid. And that helps it disperse into your larger amount of liquid without forming lumps. So if you just put the cornstarch or what have you right into the milk, it, you could probably get little lumps that would form. So we're just going to mix that in there. Then we're going to add it once the milk comes to a boil. All right, so our butter here is melting. And we've got it up on a pretty good high heat right there. That's a pretty high heat. That's okay. We're going to turn it down in a minute. We're going to add the flour and stir it all in together. We're going to add the flour in one big kind of batch here. And we want it nice and boiling when we add the flour too. All right. Turn it up even more. There we go. There we go. All right, so you see it's all boiling in the center here. We're just gonna add our one and a half cup of flour. We're gonna turn it down to about a medium. Whoops. About a medium to medium low. And we're gonna stir our flour in. It's a little bit tough with this wide pan like this, but it'll take me a minute. But we're going to get it incorporated and then we're going to cook this dough in the pan for a further uh, about three minutes. Uh, Adriana came in yesterday to the kitchen and uh, did help me with my practice round yesterday. She had some fun making some churros. Adriana, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here and it was so good, Jesse. And you gave me some churros and yesterday everyone was so happy tasting them. Oh, great. Awesome. So how, do you think they turned out pretty well? They turned out pretty, pretty well. Yes. Yeah. So yesterday I made two batches. In the first batch, um, I cooked this dough longer than the second batch. And the first batch came out more puffy and just it, it, more light in, center, in the center. And it was just a much kind of tastier churro. So don't be impatient when you're cooking this dough. It may seem like it's done, but definitely cook it on like a medium to medium low heat for at least three minutes. And your churros will come out real, real uh, puffy and delicious. Um, Adriana, do you have any um, kind of interesting uh, tidbits for us about churros here? Yeah, sure. So the churros in every country, we, they are eaten and made in different ways. Usually the more popular are the ones that are long and they have sugar on it. And in some countries, they eat it with some hot chocolate or dulce de leche that is like a caramel uh, sweetened that they put over. However, it changes a lot. For example, in Colombia, we make it then actually looking like a donut. And we also put inside like a guava sweetened or something. But in every country, they are eaten in different ways. And they are very popular. Uh, maybe Esther and Anel can help us. And maybe another uh, people can write on the chat how do they eat it in their countries. In Colombia, we usually eat them uh, during breakfast time, or it can be also a snack. And we drink them with coffee. So originally churros um, seem to be from Spain and uh, Portugal. And there's the there's also versions of this across Asia as well. They're, it's really popular in the Philippines. And in China, there's a breakfast fried pastry very similar to this as well called Yu Thai. Um, so it's kind of interesting to me how how it's really spread around all around the world. Yeah, we call actually call that uh, you are very close, Jesse, on that. Yeah. Uh, we do have this kind of breakfast called Yu Tiao. 
Oh, you, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah that's great. and looks very similar, but it's not that sweet. Um, right. In the morning, and we always eat it with soy milk. Right. So yeah, this batter doesn't have any. We're not going to add any sugar to this batter. And uh, in Spain, I believe they they don't even coat theirs in sugar necessarily. They they fry it in olive oil and then serve it with yeah, coffee or uh, chocolate, hot chocolate, like a real thick hot chocolate. Um, yeah, really popular dish all around the world. Um, really delicious too. Yes, in Spain, it's also more of a breakfast thing. You have it very early in the morning or if you party very long at night and then before you go home, you have some. And also you can have them in the afternoon, so between lunch and dinner. Um, we usually have them with hot chocolate. It's more of a winter food, winter and fall, than in the summer because it's so hot. But yes, it now is very popular. Yeah. So when I was looking online about, uh, you know, trying to look up all types of different recipes, I found um, all types of little uh, churro shops. Uh, that are, you know, there's some in South Florida, there's probably some down in Tampa too, but, um, and then in uh, other countries, it's really popular as like a street food, right? Like there'll be street vendors that'll just make uh, churros all day. And I saw like some, some people made them very thin and would bend them into like horseshoes. And then uh, some are very, you know, thick. The version we're making is definitely like a kind of a thicker uh, Latin American style. So we're gonna coat it with sugar and then even like the the like what are the churrerias? Is that, is that what it's called? Where the it's like a cafe specializing in churros? Yeah, churrerias. Yes, that's the churrerias. Yeah, it's like a uh, food they, truck. I will say what we have. Like they just make them there in. It's like a food truck on the street, and then you yeah. walk and you eat them. Yeah. Right. So this dough is looking pretty good. You see how. There were little lumps of flour in there, and most of those are gone. And that's fine. Any of the remaining lumps will get um, kind of dissipated once we add in some eggs. So we're going to add raw eggs to this, and uh, that will finish the dough here. That's looking pretty good to me. It's so nice and thick and pasty. It's not sticky. We got that whole stick of butter in there, so you definitely got a lot of butter. Um, and I'm in this non-stick pan too, but it should not stick to any kind of pan, any stainless steel pan, whatever you're using, it should not stick to it. All right, that's looking pretty well cooked. I'm gonna turn that off and then let's add in our, starch to our milk. We're gonna turn this up real quick and then add the chocolate. And the sugar actually, we're gonna do one teaspoon of sugar in here. And this is just a really quick chocolate sauce. Uh, the chocolate I use for this is uh, just a bittersweet chocolate. So it's about 60% cocoa. Um, I would not use like semi-sweet, you know, so you can find those bittersweet chips right there next to the semi-sweet and they're really good. Uh, definitely more cocoa than the, the semi-sweet. So semi-sweet's like 35 to 40% cocoa. So it has a lot more sugar in it. And so you get that nice, rich uh, dark chocolate flavor with this bittersweet. If you like really dark chocolate, you can buy like a 70 or 80% chocolate bar, chop it up and do the same thing with it here. Or you can also buy like uh, the Abuelita uh, little chocolate discs. And uh, they have directions on them to make the hot chocolate. And you can just kind of reduce the amount of liquid you put in and uh, make like a light chocolate sauce with that too. And that's, that's usually flavored with like cinnamon and some spices. Um, all right, so we're going to add this chocolate and this is a, about four ounces of chocolate. So uh, about two thirds of a cup of chips. And so we're gonna turn off the heat and we're just gonna let that chill in that hot milk. And we'll come back and we'll stir it in a minute. Okay, so for this next step, I've got our mixer out for this today. You can do this by hand. It just takes a little bit longer by hand and. Uh, I want to make it go a little more quickly so you don't have to watch me stir in eggs. So we are just going to put our batter nice and hot into the mixer. Okay, I'm going to close it up and we're going to just turn it on slow. 
So it's just on like a one speed one. Then we're gonna add our eggs one at a time. So one egg, gonna mix in. Maybe we speed it up a little bit. You can definitely do this by hand. It just takes a couple minutes to get each one incorporated. You wanna fully incorporate the egg before you add the next. If you add all the eggs all at once or too quickly, your dough will break. And so it'll, it won't be one whole mass. It'll end up being kind of lumpy, kind of like cottage cheese maybe. Probably bigger particles, but it's important to do this slowly and steadily. Let me turn it up a little bit faster. So also, if anybody has any questions, you can uh, shoot a question to Yang in the chat and she will uh, ask us whatever you, whatever you uh, have a question about. All right, down to the fourth egg here. We do have a lot of, um, I got some uh, responses from our participants saying like they all love Cheerios. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the biggest things make me think of Cheerios is Disney. Mm -hmm. Can I say? I probably went to Disney and then the thing that they offer there is Cheerios. <laughs> super, super. Oh. That's funny. Is it at Epcot or is it just, where, where did you get a churro at Disney? They just offer that. Um, I always go there at Christmas season, not this okay. year apparently, um, yeah. but they always offer the Cheerios and the turkeys over there ah. for Thanksgiving, for sure. Nice. All right, so that's pretty well mixed. We can mix a little more by hand here. And so your dough should be pretty firm, but it really shouldn't stick too much. Uh, if you stuck your hands in there, it would definitely stick to your hands, but metal and smooth stuff, it should not stick, so it should be really easy to get it out of here and mix it up a little bit more. All right. So it seems like to make churros at home, you know, most people probably aren't going to try to make this at home. It's not that it's that hard. It's more about having the right equipment to do it. Uh, so with a small investment, you know, if you're into pastries or making any kind of cakes or anything like that, uh, it's really pretty inexpensive to get a couple of these items. Uh, the first thing is you're gonna want a big star tip. And so this is where the dough gets pressed through at the end of the bag. And these, uh, you can buy them individually. If you're in town here, there's a, re a restaurant supply called Big Bend Restaurant Supply and it's open to the public. But they sell all this stuff in individual pieces. So I mean, you can buy one of these for a couple bucks. And then even this bag, it's just like a fabric bag that's coated in plastic. It'll last you a few months if you use it a bunch. Uh, and this costs $2.50. So you, you know, this is what you'd also use to do uh, cake decorating or um, any number of pastries uh, you form uh, with these bags like um, macarons, uh, all types of cookies you can press through the bags. Um, so anyways, that's not not too expensive, especially here we have a good resource to get it. Uh, and honestly, I don't really know anywhere in town that does really good churros. Does anybody know of a restaurant in town that makes good ones? I saw some, no. No. <laughs> El Jalisco, El Jalisco has some churros. Um, yeah. Decent, I would say. So you know, <laughs> I would I would definitely go to El Jalisco and get some churros there. But you know, this is not a commercial. I want. I, want to right. I would. I would. <laughs> the other place I've seen churros in town is um, uh, actually it's Costco in their food court. They do churros. Oh wow! Yeah, and I but. Think Cocinero also had some churros with the sauce, with the hot sauce. So huh. that's the only place in, in, in town that I've seen them with a, with a hot chocolate sauce. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I can tell you, we will definitely do churros again in person for coffee hour. 
and we'll be I the biggest so. churro hotspot in town. I promise you. <laughs> and we're gonna be there for sure. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we need to load this bag. And so first you need to put your tip in the bottom here and you need to make sure that tip is gonna fit. So I had to trim this bag. And so it fits really tight in there. And then you fold, you fold it down like this. So we wanna load the dough into the bottom of the bag. If you, if you try to do it with it out, it's gonna stick at the top and it's just gonna kind of get messy. So you wanna load it in small amounts right into the bottom here. And we, this whole batch will fit down in here pretty easily. This is an 18 inch bag. You can get them in a bunch of different sizes. So the other part of this that's kind of challenging at home is to set up a, a fryer. And so honestly, the best way is to, to buy like a little electric fryer from Walmart or something, just something kind of inexpensive. Um, that's the safest way to do it. Oh, I can't get this dough out of here. All right, here we go. Um, just because it's self-contained, it's electric. You can set the temperature on it. So here I don't have or a fryer, so I have to set up a, a stovetop fryer, which is definitely acceptable and can work, but you have to keep in mind a few uh, important safety considerations. You really need a, a lid. Um, this looks kind of hot. You need a lid uh, for your fryer in case it does catch on fire. So if, a, if your fryer does catch on fire, um, the best way to put it out is to deprive it of oxygen and just pop the lid on it really quickly. Um, the worst thing you could possibly do with a grease fire is to add water to it because um, that would make it explode. Uh, the second thing you're going to need to get is a uh, like a candy or a fryer thermometer. And this is really important so that we know what temperature we're at. We're not gonna leave this in here while we're frying, but we're gonna get it up to pretty close to 400. We need a high temp for this oil to start off. And then as it's frying, we can kind of just monitor it and adjust the temperature as we need to. So right now, let me just double check. So we are at about 375. Then also when you're frying, you wanna have a hood over top of your, your fryer and vent out all this kind of steam that's going to come off. The steam that comes off is going to have all these oil particles all over it and it'll stick to everything in your kitchen. And, and uh, so if you're frying often, it's really good to have like a little hood over your stove. All right, so I've compressed this in here pretty well. I've twisted the top once I've got it compressed. And I'm going to hold my right hand, this is my squeezing hand at the top. And then I've pressed enough so that the dough starts coming out. So I've loaded the tip, it's ready to go. And the way I like to do this one, actually let me grab a little, here it is. With my left hand, the dough's gonna come out, I'm gonna let it hang and I'm gonna pinch it and drop it. And so my left hand, I like to have a little bit of hand spray or water, something, so that the dough isn't gonna be sticking on my left hand. And we're gonna, Push it out about six, seven inches or so, and then pinch it off. So here we go. And it, whoop, that one twisted a little bit. Okay. There we go. That one's kind of big. And we're going to twist it up again and then press. All right. And you can just keep loading up the oil here. And these are going to fry it pretty nice. We want to watch the temperature because as we add, it is going to cool off some. That's okay. I've got the heat on a very low right now. All right. And they're frying up. So the other part here is I've got this drip tray. You can just have like a sheet pan with uh, paper towels, something like that is fine. And then you're gonna need some metal tongs. This is just something that I have in our kitchen. This isn't something you need, it's called a spider, but you can use it to press everything so it's all submerged and cooking together. So the ones that I put in first, let's twist these around. Oh yeah, these are looking good. We're gonna turn them. You don't want them to cook too long on one side. 
um, because the top side will kind of form holes because it's expanding as it's cooking, it's expanding. That egg is the only thing that's the leavening for this. So that, you know, there's no baking soda or anything, but that egg is expanding from the heat and you want it to expand evenly on all sides. So you need to turn them fairly often from the beginning here. All right, Oop, there we go. Okay, so they're all flipped now and then I'm gonna do a little compression thing so they go down to the bottom. And this is basically it. Now we're gonna cook them until they're, uh, you know, not dark brown, but definitely toasty brown across the whole surface. Oops, I'll kind of roll back over. I think we need to turn up the heat on it a little bit. Seems like the as the action of the bubbles and stuff reduce, the, the, the temperature is reducing too much. So we want to keep a nice, active bubbling and frying happening. If the temperature is too low, it'll be just turn out kind of greasy, and we, they won't get quite as crisp. The idea here is that we get a nice crisp outer shell, and then the center is going to stay really nice and moist and tender. They look so good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a good batch. A very interesting fact is that in Colombia, we also say churro to a very handsome uh, guy or churra to a very beautiful girl. So we will say in Spanish, like, que churro, que churra. And we are saying that that people is very beautiful. Uh -huh. All right, so these are finishing up here. Some places I saw, there's a lot, I, I watch like these, the, the restaurants, kind of the commercialized restaurants, or I guess cafes that do these, and it seems like there's a lot of different recipes out here for this and different techniques. There's big machines that they put the dough into and it pumps it out, and they, you can either put it on the sheet pans like this and then freeze it and then fry it. And I was messing around with shapes the other day. I really like the horseshoe shape. And uh, the best way it looks like to do that from what I can tell is to pipe it out onto a sheet pan and then freeze it and pull it out after you've formed it and uh, then fry it like that. Uh, if you do a really thin batter, uh, it seems like you could form it once it came out, you could quickly kind of push it into a horseshoe shape. There was one a street vendor, I think it was in Columbia, was doing it, just these little horseshoe shaped ones. All right, these are looking pretty good. I think I'm going to turn these heat off. I'm going to transfer to our tray. All right, let's check out our chocolate sauce and see how this turned out. We're gonna let the churros cool for a minute uh, before we uh, add our sugar. Here's this chocolate, let's see how this turned out. We're just gonna stir it now. Okay. I might need to heat it up a little bit more. Oh, it's looking pretty good. So this is kind of like a thick chocolate, hot chocolate right now. If you want to make it more thick than this, you could add a little cornstarch or add a little more chocolate. Actually, now that I'm stirring the chocolate more, it's actually thickening up even more. It's looking great. Oh, yes. So this is pretty intense to drink as a hot chocolate for sure, but it is definitely perfect for dipping. Okay, so we've got our bowl for dipping. There you go. And then to get the sugar onto our churros, we're just gonna put some sugar on a plate here. This is a pretty easy way to do it. 
And then I'm gonna like a little cinnamon too. So I'm just gonna do a little dash of cinnamon in here. Stir it around real quick. And so at this point, once they don't have to be cool, but you want all that uh, residual oil to either soak in or, or drip off before you put it in your sugar. If you, that oil kind of gets in the sugar, it'll just make it clump up and it. You won't be able to use the sugar very much. It'll kind of get clumpy pretty quick. So Jesse, I have a question mm -hmm. here uh, for you. Okay. So a day Aguilar says, I have been looking for a churro recipe, but that can be done through baking in the oven. So the question is, does Chef Jesse have any suggestions of how this recipe can be changed to be made in oven rather than frying? Mm -hmm. um, you could make this in the oven too. So this is this pastry, the dough itself is called shu, C-H-O-U-X. And it is super versatile. So you could pipe it onto a sheet pan like this with some parchment, or you could just, you know, oil up the plenty amount of fat in it uh, from the from the butter and the eggs. So um, I would just I would try this one personally and see. This dough is also really good for uh, savory stuff. So you can add cheese to this dough and bake it and make cheese puffs with it. All, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, Laura likes that one. Okay, so. Um, we've got our chocolate sauce, we've got a little dulce de leche or uh, arequipe, cajeta, it's a milk caramel, which is also really popular with the churros, so we can dip it right in. Oh, that looks so good. <laughs> yeah, it's going to get a nice, nice thick coating of chocolate here. You can also just go ahead without doing the sugar and... Um, go right on. Let's take a dual say here. And then uh, some of the fancier kind of shops where they're trying to make some really eye catching stuff. They'll even do little sprinkles and, uh, you know, different toppings, nuts and things on here. So you get a little color. Um, yeah, really, really delicious light pastry here. Very versatile dough. Really good one to learn for all types of culinary applications. Um, that's about it for me. If you all have any other questions, uh, you can shoot it over to Young and uh, we can see if we can get them answered for you. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Uh, we'll be back uh, the first week in December and then we'll have another one after that too. Um, Thanks again, and I will see you all later. Thank you, Jesse. Um, I do Thank have a question so here. Okay. So uh, for the fry part, can we use air, air fly, fry to fry it instead of like? Mm. Yeah, I personally haven't used air fryers too much. Mm -hmm. From what I understand about them is that you put, that you put your, your item in a basket that goes into the air fryer. And I'd be afraid that this dough would, you know, it's pretty firm, but I feel like it would sink into that basket probably more than you'd want it to. And it'd probably get stuck. Or, I, I don't know if it'd really work in that, but um, you could certainly try. I don't know, maybe, maybe if you put a piece of aluminum foil down on the bottom of that basket and then piped this onto the foil or, you know, piped it on the foil and just put it in there, that would work. Um, but, you know, I'd be interested to know if that works or not, <laughs> if you do it. Thank you. And also sure. another question pumping up saying like for the Cheerios, is there any other way to do like in different shape? Um, oh yeah. Okay, so let me show you a couple shapes here. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, so it, you know, you when it's in the fryer, you can do a spiral shape. So you, you can just, go around with it and not pinch it off at all. You're just going around in a circle until you fill the whole fryer. Um, and then I did some horseshoes yesterday. And so I just take a piece of parchment, do a little quick pan spray, and then we can do, try to pipe it horseshoe out here. So 
And so we can gently kind of, so the bottom is gonna be flat, but we can kind of press this together a little bit and try not to disturb the, the ridges too much. And then from here, uh, you, we would freeze it and you don't have to freeze it till it's solid. You just freeze it till you can grab it and quickly put it in the fryer. And those really, those worked out pretty well. Um, and then as Adriana was saying too, yesterday, they, uh, we tried this too. We just piped out like a little circle and pressed it together into a little donut. So you can do that as well. And then whenever you're working with this with your hands, you just do a little bit of oil or pan spray or something and it won't stick to your hands. So, so you can do a little circle like this. You can leave the ridges. You can kind of smooth them out if you want. Um, you don't want to go too thick with this dough. A single layer is probably as much as you'd want to do. It gets a little dense if you do more than that. Um, but yeah, the spiral is definitely popular. I've seen that. And there's even machines that you know, it's just like a stainless table like this with a, a little circular fryer in the middle. And then a machine that compresses the dough and pushes it out right in the end. And you just kind of guide the pastry out as it gets pushed out. And it's all somewhat automated. Um, but I think those are the main kind of shapes that, that are popular. The sticks are, are you know, pretty easy. Um, but yeah, definitely some options. Thank you, Jesse. I think everyone's super interested of doing the churros at home. So it's a time to, um, we do a little bit breakout room so that they can ask the following up questions um, to you. Later. Yeah, I can jump. Yeah, I can jump into a breakout room for um, about 10 minutes or so. So anybody wants to jump in yeah. and ask some questions, I'll be happy to talk to you, uh, okay. but I won't be able to stay the whole time. Sure, lovely. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesse. Right. As usual. Yep, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.